Okay, so for those of you who don't know about this session, if you haven't attended an IFBF meeting, we have this thing called Positive Alternative Lenders. And uh, the, the purpose of this is to highlight lenders who might not be, uh, you know, on the, 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 one of the big banks or one of the big regional banks, uh, but who have great products, great service, uh, you know, less than an hour call times, uh, BDMs that'll get back to you, all those sorts of things. Obviously the big banks do that too, but I think we can all agree that there's a high frustration level in the industry at this point around some of the service levels that are out there. Uh, so Gerald is from Heritage. And uh, so Gerald, tell us please about um, what's happening and your products and what you'd like to highlight as far as your niche and so forth. Over to you. Fantastic. Uh, so am I able to share my screen at all? Just go to share screen. See, yep, there you go. Perfect. We're picking that up now. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got, we've got a couple of different things, obviously. Uh, for those that uh, notice a few of the names on this, I know a lot of you probably have heard of Heritage Bank before, but just a, a quick rundown for those that haven't. Uh, Heritage Bank been around for more than 140 years, the largest customer owned bank in Australia. But um, in recent times, the last two years, we've made a lot of changes here in New South Wales, especially with two branches opening up out of Queensland for the, the first time in the bank's long history. So, uh, with another one to come, so at the moment, we've got a branch. Uh, in Parramatta Westfields, one in Castle Towers, and another one just about to open not long off in Macquarie Shopping Centre there as well. So that's just to give our customers here, uh, well, basically a bit more support for their general banking needs, as well as uh, for you guys as brokers to be able to meet the clients there, sign up their loan docs with them as well, if you so want to do so. Uh, but what I'll go through today, a few of the different things that we do uh, in the industry, uh, a few niches, so to say. Um, the first one I'll touch on will be bridging. I'll touch a bit on family guarantee, a few other different policy guidelines that we do, and a few hints and tips on how to submit applications with us, because I know that you know every little bank's got their little uh, quirks and things like that. And uh, if we've got time, we have a few questions. Hopefully. So, um, okay, so for our bridging lines, uh, look, we, we do, do them completely different. A lot of banks will talk about peak debts, end debts, that type of stuff. We do not typically mention these things when we're assessing an application, right? So uh, for those that, you know, obviously, most of you would know what a bridging loan is, uh, but if you know, a client wants to find their dream home but hasn't sold their existing one, then this is the, the uh, product for you guys. With Heritage Bank, we treat it very differently. Uh, the best way to explain it, actually, is just to, in this screen here. Now, what, what I'm showing here is actually a copy of our bridging estimator. Okay, so this is how easy our calculator is for bridging. I know that a lot of people steer away from bridging because uh, it's just too hard sometimes, uh, but this is quite easy. What we'll see here is two sides. On the left-hand side there, you've got the property being sold. And then on the right hand side, the property that you're going to purchase. Now, we structure the loan just like this. So there's one application with two splits. Essentially, the first split, the one on the left hand side there, is like a refinance and cash out against the existing property being sold. Now, we don't need that property to even be on the market when you come in for an application. Okay? So, what we're doing here, say for example, the sale price is 350000 the maximum they'll be able to go to is 72 percent. Once we minus out the existing debt, we can see the available equity there underneath the 60,000. Now that 60,000 will help us on the other side, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The reason we do 72 percent, I know it's a bit obscure in terms of you know, why 72, well, it allows for 8 percent interest capitalization, and it doesn't allow that loan to go into the mortgage insurance space. Right, which is really handy on the other side. You'll also note that there's uh, close to $100,000 of uh, equity in that property that we haven't utilised. And, and the thing is there that any sale proceeds remaining after the sale of that property, we're not forcing you to put back on the loan. Like with other banks, you'll see, oh, 
a, a condition saying that you know, X loan must be reduced to this uh, for it to proceed, which puts a lot of pressure on the client, obviously, to, to get the sale price that they need. But, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll touch more on that in a moment. Now, I, I mentioned the available equity. At 60,000, you can see you jump across to help out with the purchase. So then we've got the purchase price, plus the estimate of cost of 16,000, minus the available equity, and which isn't showing on the screen for some reason, will leave you with what's called a residual debt. So the residual debt in this instance would be the 400,000 uh, plus the 16 minus the 60, uh, which will leave you with a residual debt of 356. Now that residual debt is the most important thing, okay? Uh, in this case, the proposed LBR is 89%, which means mortgage insurance would have to be paid. Now, with most lenders, mortgage insurance is paid on the peak debt, but not with heritage bank. It's only paid on that residual debt of that figure I said of 356, which means you're going to save the customer in some instances thousands of dollars just by bringing it to heritage bank. Now, that 356 bit, once again, uh, is the most important figure. So we, we mentioned the mortgage insurance premium is based on that, but uh, also serviceability is based on that figure, and you guys get paid on that figure. So once it's not quite in debt, it is a little bit higher, uh, it's not peak debt either. So I know some lenders out there will pay you one peak and then call you back once that other property sells. We're going to pay you on that residual debt, and then there's no callback once the, the tender property for sale is sold. So essentially, we're going to set this one up as one application of two suites. One suite for the max bridging amount, which you can see on the left hand side of 252,000. And then the other suite for the 256, which you can't see there, but which is the residual debt. Now, on the left hand side, of that suite will just have interest capitalized. You don't have to make the repayment, but of course, uh, if the client wishes to, they can. And they can just let the interest capitalize there and it will just clear from the sale. Uh, essentially, what we're giving them is their dream home, and then they can just start making repayments on that residual loan. Now, that 100,000 odd that's left over, depending on how long it takes the property to sell, of course, what do they do with those funds? And as I mentioned, we don't really care. Uh, we've done our assessment based on a slightly higher figure. It can come out and wash the same way. So we can like pay down on their loan, you can pay the principal portion off, or you can put it in redraw or your offset account, or even put it in the minor home improvements or go on a holiday, it's totally up to you. But essentially, that is bridging the heritage bank in a nutshell. So, really easy to do. Obviously, not every client's going to meet this policy. You know, no policy is ever always met by clients. But if you do fit in those parameters, I suggest using this calculator. It literally takes 30 seconds to do. Um, I, I have uh, broker clients that use this with every bridging application, whether it comes to heritage or not, because it's just a really easy way to show a client what's going on. Okay. Um, moving to the next one. One of our biggest uh, or main attractions, I suppose, is our family guarantee. Now, the reason for this is that we offer 100% of the purchase price plus costs, so typically 5%. Plus another 5% of the purchase price of debt consolidation. Now, everyone gets that, whether they both uh, owned a property before or not. Okay, but the two additional things that first home buyers get, so they get a, like a scope knives moment where, wait, there's more. They can do all those things, so the purchase price plus the cost plus the debt consolidation. First home buyers also have the option of up to $50,000 cash of additional borrowing for home improvements or you know, like goods purchase at that type of stuff as well. So that's a, that's a real plus for the young couple going out there. If they can obviously serve the debt and mum and dad's happy with it, then you know they can move into their new home and put in a new kitchen or a new bathroom or you know or, or even buy some furniture and stuff like that. So it's making uh, the dreams of owning a new home even better. Okay. Uh, so also, if you're a first-time buyer, you have the option of buying as an investment property. 
So if you're not a first time buyer, we only do it for over off purchases, but if you are a first time buyer, you can do either either. So you can do your first, your first purchase as an investment or as an off as well. It's even uh, available to do construction loans. So we have some going through the system at the moment where they purchase land um, with the intention to build quite soon uh, their new home. So we can do two loans in that regard, both structured the same way. The way we do structure our family guarantees is one submission. So we don't need you to do two submissions in these instances, only one. And you, once again, two splits, 80% and then the 20% plus the remaining cost or whatever might be on top of that. Now, it's only that 20% plus that the guarantors are guaranteed. So it is a limited guarantee. And the reason we can do all these things is it's the way that we look at the guarantors. For lack of better wording, the easiest way to put it is, does the guarantor pass their current affair test? I know we've all heard that before. So if a guarantor is offering up an investment property, then it's basically quite good, okay? Because the exit strategy around it's not going to put them in dire conditions of where they have to pull on the guarantee. But if they're offering up an owner occupied property, which we, we all know is probably more than 90% of the time, then we just ask a few more questions. Now, do they have sufficient tangible assets such as accessible super, cash, shares, or other property that they might not be using to clear the guarantee amount, but also leave them in a decent position where we're not going to leaves them without money or super to, to live on uh, as, an exit, as an exit strategy. So if you've got one, <coughs> I suggest just give him uh, your BDM, whether that be me, Jeff or Chris, just give us a call and we'll run that through with you on the phone or via email, whichever is, is we'll suited for you guys. Uh, but we really do need to get that sorted out for our uh, off because it is a little bit more stringent around than a guarantor office in our own occupied property. Now they can still work, of course. So we can go down that serviceability line if we need to. Uh, once again, just have a chat with your BDMs. Now, the products, any product is available, even our fixed rate products. Now you've, you've, you've heard of our fixed rate products before, I'm sure. Our fixed rate products are out for unlimited repayments and unlimited rebuild. Which means if I had a four hundred thousand dollar fixed rate loan and I scratch a scratch of two hundred grand, if I'm that lucky, I put that whole two hundred thousand on my fixed rate loan and then redraw on that as I see fit. Our fixed rates also allow for construction as well, uh, so you can do a construction loan under a fixed rate product. The fixed rate will apply from the first draw down, so whatever the rate at the time. Of that. The fixed rate also allows you to re-amortise during the fixed rate period. Okay, so as long as you don't pay out that fixed rate, you can do as, pretty much as much as a variable loan to get the flexibility of variable but with the certainty of the payment. So we're seeing a lot of those being locked in at the moment uh, because of what you can do with it and the uncertainty that can start to get buzzed about in the industry about what's going on with loans. There's a few other little policy niches here. Um, I will mention first off the bat that we've had a slight change in our acreage. Um, we used to only do rural residential up to 100 acres, but now we will do rural up to 100 acres as well to a max of 70%. Uh, just to make sure that services are available to at least the boundary and there is all the road access to that. And uh, we are good to go. Providing them now and then we're going to stack up. With overtime, uh, definitely acceptable in terms of the form of income you can use for serviceability. If it is a mandatory part of the role, so okay, if you're a nurse, police, or emergency services worker, that's that's generally the case anyway. But say I, I, I'm a factory worker, that it's part of my role to do night shift and things like that, with all those penalties and overtime then we can use up to 100% of overtime and serviceability. Okay, we just need to be able to confirm that with the employer, either via a letter or a verbal chat with the employer. If it's not a condition of employment, but just consistent, we can use up to 80% of the overtime. For bonuses and commissions, uh, what we do is it must be up with the employer over the last two years, 
same employer, the average out over those two years and then use 80% of that. Um, I will just quickly jump into the loan qualifying. We're starting to see a lot of loans uh, come our way due to self-supportability. So jump on our broker website, which I'll mention in a moment. We've got a brand new servicing calculator there that's all online. Um, it has been a while since you used us. I think you know, about a year ago, we were still offering up a Excel spreadsheet to do servicing. This is all brand new. This is uh, a new calculator is very easy to use. It uses a loan qualifying rate of 4.9% for actual rate plus two and a half, whichever is the higher. So if you were to use our fixed rate, for example, for under rock, which is 219 at the moment for memory, uh, your qualifying rate is going to be 4.9. Because with our fixed rates, we go off the actual fixed rate for serviceability as well, and not on the dirt rate, which a lot of them is going to say do. Okay. Hey, John, I'm awesome. just going to jump in real quick. If I could get you to wrap yes. up maybe in two minutes. Uh, yep. So, and then we can take some questions. So, um, yeah. Yep, too easy, too easy. I will quickly mention that we don't use DTI. Uh, so you would see that in calculated a lot and no CCR. Okay, the expat application is now accepted to 80% if we're doing DNI. So, uh, just quickly on the next page. These are just some submission tips. I don't know uh, if you, uh, PJ, you're going to share any of this with the, with the guys later on, but these are just some submission tips for getting your application through the system a lot easier. You follow those tips, you can find these on our broker website, which uh, is brokers.heritage.com.au. It's just been revamped, it's a, it's a very new website. So jump on and have a look at that. Uh, look, once again, if you have any questions, um, remember after this, please just give myself, Chris, or Jeff a call and we're happy to chat. So, I can hand over to questions. Perfect. Um, I will just ask you two quick questions. Uh, access to credit, you, uh, when you're working with your credit department, do you get direct access with your credit assessors? Uh, uh, to be completely honest, not as much as what we're used to. Uh, a lot of our credit team at the present point in time, they're transitioning them back into the office, but then COVID spikes up again and they're back working from home at the moment. So it, it, it is a bit of a hit and miss. Sure. At the moment with uh, contact with our credit team, but we do have a 1 800 number, uh, 1 800 67 499, where you can ring to get updates on your applications anyway. And what's your wait time? <laughs> well, it's not too bad actually. Uh, the, the feedback that I get is it's they you do get through uh, often more often than not. It is our contact center that's handling that 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 line at the moment. So uh, perfect. Quick. And those guys are here in Australia and they're twenty four hours as well. So very uh, good. Our contact center. Yep. Uh, did you have another question? Uh, no, no, that's it for me. Uh, I don't think we had any in the chat. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, for those of you who are with Connective, I know Heritage uh, from time to time is bouncing around and uh, doing the uh, Connective sort of Prezo days that Kim Warner and some of the other BDMs are putting together. So um, they do a pretty thorough presentation on their, um, on their products and other things as well. So um, thanks for that, Gerald. Really appreciate that. We did thank you very much for your time, guys. And I'll unshare Perfect. Thank you. Uh, now we've got Sarah from uh, Victoria Mortgage Group, who is also going to um, uh, let us know about Vic Mortgage Group. Where is Sarah? There you are. Uh, do you need to share your screen? No, that's all good. I'm just going to have a, um, a, a, a brief chat in regards to some of our niches. Um, so good morning, members. Um, it's disappointing that we can't get out today. It's such a nice day today. But anyway, um, we'll just enjoy the weather from home. Um, yeah, so VMG is a family owned and managed business for 75 years and I thought this was quite impressive until I heard Gerald say that um, Heritage was around for 140 years. So anyway, I've got a little bit of catching up to do Gerald and <laughs> with you. Um, but we apply um, a flexible common sense approach to our lending scenarios that don't meet, meet the strict criteria of tier one lenders. Um, so I've been in, in lending for probably about 13 plus years um, and it's really refreshing to move from the, from the bank space into the, the um, non-conforming space and see, you know, we, instead of just going, no, we can't do that, we, we encompass a whole wider range of, of, of scenarios um, that we can do. 
So I'm the BDM for New South Wales with my fellow BDM, Brian McMahon. Um, I basically do north, such as Coffs Harbour, all the way down to the northern beaches and um, the North Shore to the south of the city. And Brian, my fellow BDM, does the western part of Sydney um, in the same scope. Um, yeah. And we do have an amazing broker support team that we can um, talk to one-on-one, -on -one, which I find is imperative. Um, I, just yesterday, I had a three-way with a broker, me and, and um, the, the broker support team to nut out um, a scenario. And I was just following on the, on the heels of Brian McMahon, who, who was following me before. So we're very, our, our broker support team is very approachable, um, timely. Um, we have we had a pre-approval issued, um, and, and don't quote me on this, but um, recently I had one in as little as three hours, um, and I know that Brian had one in less than that, um, just only subject to um, evaluation. So we're we're very approachable and um, knowledgeable and timely in in regards to that. Um, so just a couple of niches um, for, for those of you that don't play in the space of non-conforming or have that bo those bottom draw deals that you're thinking, oh, what am I going to do with that? Um, then this, this could offer you know, a definite solution for, for those. Um, we, can, we consider cash out up to 80% of the LVR. Um, so it's just only limited to the security that's offered. Um, unlike other non-conforming lenders where their cash out policy is limited to a certain amount, we're limited to the, um, the secure, security and 80% of that, of that LVR. Um, so, you know, it, we can consider cash out purposes for debt consolidations, purchase of another property, even commercial properties, um, purchase of shares, gifting of, of funds to family members, um, super, superannuation contributions, um, and even on the refinance of a commercial commercial finance. Um, we've just officially um, expanded our limit of our um, cut off our loan from 1.5 million to 2 million. However, on a case by case basis, we can consider loans above above 2 million as well. We can lend, VMG can lend to, um, to the majority of corporate structures, such as um, including hybrid trust, um, which other non-conforming lenders can't consider. Um, just noting that we can't consider self-managed super fund um, trust. We will consider at the moment the annualization of income for self-employed for 2021 on the basis of, of short-term AVNs. Um, so basically, if, if um, the bank statements are provided with um, BAS and interim financials, we can annualise that figure out. Um, sorry about my dog barking in the background. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and for the moment, we have um, extended the assessment of draft 2020 financials to the end of June. Um, so that leaves five days for you guys to get your um, scenarios to us um, for us to consider that. Um, VMG do not, does not credit score. Um, as, as such, our prime rate will be offered to clients um, and that's despite having missed payments, um, overdrawn accounts, over the limit or missed credit card payments and, and most importantly, poor credit scores. We're extremely competitive in non-conforming construction scenarios, but um, yeah, we've got any detailed questions, we might take that offline because that could go in depth a little bit. Um, we're very relaxed with employment probation. So with permanent PAYG applicants, all we require is one pay slip, evidence of one payment on the bank statement and an employment contract and probation periods basically just don't, don't apply. And that's um, the same light in regards to casual income. So the, I've, I've approved two deals um, in this year where the number of weeks of casual employment has been anywhere from three to four weeks and no history in the same, um, the same industry. Um, so finally, to celebrate VMG's 75th birthday this year, we've slashed our impaired interest rates. So our sold product is now um, reduced um, to 4.69 from 4.99 and the sold product's pretty straightforward. This is just for defaults of any nature on an applicant's credit report that are equal to or less than 10,000. Our assist product has been reduced from 6.49 to 4.99. So it's a staggering 150 basis points. And um, assist scenarios could include the likes of debt consolidation, where there's multiple defaults, voluntary administration, 
discharge, bankrupts, and part nine debt agreements. So, so we're just about as long as a scenario makes sense. And that's the essence of, of VMG. As long as a scenario makes sense, VMG will do the very best to make this work and get the deal settled. So I encourage all of you to reach out to myself or my fellow BDM, Brian McMahon, um, if there's a bottom draw deal that you have been putting off um, and see if we're, we're able to assist in getting this deal settled for you. And that's me. Fantastic, thank you so much. The old bottom drawer deal. Check those bottom drawers uh, this weekend and see what might fall out for our friends at uh, Victoria Mortgage Group. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was awesome. Any questions uh, from anybody for Sarah or for Gerald for that matter? We had a couple, I think, in the chat, um, Gerald, for you. So you might just, uh, if you're still on, I, I can't see where you've gone, maybe respond to uh, Michael and Anil uh, regarding a couple of questions. He might have gone though, I'm not sure. Anyway, in the absence of any questions, uh, we will move on. Let me, um, and where's Nissen? Nissen, there you are. Take yourself off mute, brother. And uh, share with us, Hi. Nissen's, oh, he's gone into the corner. So this must be the tech corner that he's now in. So we're gonna learn from Nissen this month's awesome tech tip. Hi guys. Um Today, I would like to share with you uh, what we have been using in the business, uh, Canva. Uh, Canva has been actually helping us a lot uh, in designing the templates uh, for social media, even videos for uh, uh, YouTube. I would like to share my screen with you to show you a few, oops, I can't share it. One moment, one moment, there you go. Okay, so. Had to turn it off because we were uh, we got Sorry. to see Lori's inbox there for a second. And I, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have wanted us to uh, <laughs> see. So Cam Canva has uh, three different uh, memberships. Uh, one of them is for free. You can do just minimal uh, templates for your social media, and the other one, which is honestly a very very good price, uh, about seventeen ninety nine a month, and you can just design anything you like. Um, Canva has increased a lot of. Um, I added actually a lot of other features to uh, rather than just the templates. So on top, you can create presentations, um, templates, uh, or you can create a social media a post. Um, you can create video, uh, if you like, any print product as well, marketing products, and for your office, um, anything like a letter or magazine or, or a front page. So there's enormous you can do with Canva, and it's very, very easy to use. All you have to do is just select the templates that you wanted to work on. Um, once the uh, templates are uploaded, it is very easy. You can change anything on this template. There you go. Come up. There you go. So you can change the font if you like. I can just call it Excellence Finance. I think your tip tech tip next month is going to be a learn how to type program. Yeah, yeah, I need that actually. And then you can check, um, you can actually change the, uh, the, the colors on the background. All you have to do is just go up here, uh, select anything you like, and it changes as simple as that. You can change the pictures if you like. Um, so you can go here and then um, add your own pictures or your own, um, anything that you have, you can add it to it. But as simple as that, you can download it, uh, and then you can proceed to use it for social media. Uh, I really don't want to go into too much details with these because it's very, very easy to use. Um, you can also uh, create videos if you like. So if you go to video, uh, select again any video you like. Um, you can change the font in the video. You can change the colors and the timing of the video. So if I select this one, again, I can change that, um, you know, that, that font. And if you wanted to see how long that is going, you just gotta go on top and start it. As simple as that. And for honestly, $18 a month, they're worth it. So to, to save you a lot of time and to, to look more professional in the, on the social media, you can create as many posts as you can, especially with a pro um, membership. And you can actually add those to your tube as well to make you look more professional. It's very easy to use, uh, muck around with it. It's for free. Um, you, have, you can actually uh, join in for free. And then once you join in for free, you can muck around with it, have a look how it works. And if you like it, you can go to the uh, pro uh, membership 
and then you can add videos and whatever else you like. That's it. Very good. Very good. Well, there you go. Another tool that uh, is out there that can be used in your business. If you can't afford a digital marketer, you can't, you know, yet invest the in money in those sorts of resources and you want to do it yourself. There's a great option um, for you to, to do that. So I'll now move on to our, thank you, Nissen, by the way, where'd you go? Pleasure. You're on there somewhere. Anyway, I'll now move on to uh, someone who's been in the industry for a very long time, a friend of the IFBF forever and a day, uh, Dina Janes, who uh, is from Your Client Matters, is going to uh, show us how to find some business, not just in that bottom drawer, but uh, where else are we going to be finding some business, Dina? Over to you. You just need to unmute yourself. Thank you. There you go. We've got you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for inviting me today as well. I'll just share my screen as well. I've got a few slides to show you today. Uh, get the right one. Got it. Okay, got it. And I've got a couple of things to get organised. Okay. Um, I'm going to put something in the chat room in a moment. Okay, so look, thank you for the invite. Um, really nice to be, like I said, I think I've been following IFBF since the inception and uh, how long have you been guys around for now? It must be at least 10 years, is it? I think it's on uh, yeah. about 13 or 14, maybe. Uh, sorry, uh, PJ, I can just add to that. Dana, i really like to thank you. Dana was one of those people who supported IFBF since 2007. We started 2006 and I have photos of you. Oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of that. You may want to keep that to yourself, Ms. Well, I, I did, actually. We'll have to pull those out and, uh, and, and do some, uh, you know, remembrance. Yeah, might be kilos lighter and a few less wrinkles, I'm imagining. Um, uh, you, look, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. <laughs> but look, thank you. It's been always been a pleasure to be involved in what you do and supporting the community. And I think that's what, uh, that's one of the privileges for, you know, us, of those that have been around for a while. We certainly haven't been around for a... 140 years, um, like um, um, what, what was the bank? Was it Heritage? And, um, Heritage, yeah. Heritage. Uh, but we've been, it feels like it sometimes that we've been around that long as well. Um, your client matter started in 2004, actually, or three, the first delivery marketing products in 2004. So I think we're having our 17th birthday this year. Um, so most of you know what we do. and um, But what I wanted to talk to you today about was, if you have a look at the topic Stephen asked me to talk about, it was, can you find more business? And when you first asked me to present on this topic, um, you might remember, Steve, we had a bit of a conversation about it because I was quite perplexed thinking that, why would you want to talk about lead generation or finding more business in the environment that we've got? Because the girls that are working in my office, both Georgia, who looks after our marketing partners, and Christy, who's online today, who um, brings on more brokers for us, they can confirm that nearly every conversation they're having is brokers just so busy, so flat out, they haven't got time to do much at all. So, um, so there's two sides of that. Those, if you are busy, um, sometimes we drop the ball and don't continuing, continue our marketing efforts and that will pan out in you know, months to come when you're not busy. Um, and those, if you're not busy right now, why aren't you busy? Because you should be flat out. This has probably been one of the most exciting times for brokers that I've seen in my two decades of working with you. Um, so if I've got that completely wrong, uh, what I thought I'd do today is um, just do a quick poll. So in your um, chat box, I'll just put a link in there. If you don't mind sharing with us how busy you actually are so that we can make sure what we talk about today is actually relevant to um, where you're going. So the first poll is about how busy are you? So somewhere from I'm at capacity and can't, you know, can't take any more leads to I'm really struggling to find leads. So it'd be interesting to see what the members are doing at the moment. Um, so if you could fill that poll out. There's also a second question there as well, that after you finish the first one, it's also about what proportion of your loans that you're settling right now are fixed versus variable. Because I think that's going to play out in your lead generation for the next, you know, one to two, maybe three or four, five years because of the growing interest and the grow the increase in the number of loans that are being fixed as opposed 
the variable now. If you do split loans, can you just include those in as fixed because that they have a fixed component? And I just want to talk about what we need to do to prepare for the future of, of our market. So I'll share the results with you as you start entering those, just to have a look at what's happening for everyone. And um, let me have a look, I'll just move that out of the way. So you're getting some results, everyone able to we jump in there and do that? Results, not a lot, but someone's at capacity at the moment, so that's good to see. So I only had a few people enter, so if you click on that link, how many people did you say are online today, PJ? Uh, there's 37 in the group. Uh, it will take you to an external uh, a browser because it's a survey monkey survey, so it won't open yes. up within this environment. It'll it'll ping out to uh, to another browser. Oh, if got a second, yeah, if they've got a second screen or something that they can do. So it'd just be nice to have a few more people giving us their thoughts at the moment. Interesting. Constant cake. Okay. Does that include funders? <laughs> Well, I'd like to know question two, yes, particularly are you doing more fixed than variable? So yes, in my space, it might not apply, but I'd love to do it otherwise. <laughs> okay, well, that's all right. So just try to get a feel for what's happening with the group so I can just pitch the education um, accordingly. So I'll just wait, I'll just refresh my results screen and then I'll share that with you. Michelle, why don't you just answer for a friend? Answer for a friend or a bro. What are you, what are you noticing brokers are doing more? Okay, dude. Oh, good idea. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll just move. Can you see the results on that screen now? Right. Yep. All right. So I'll just refresh once more. Not oh, new dashboard. Survey is awesome if you want to do surveys for your clients as well and get feedback, it's very good. Okay, so, and Canva Nissan is an excellent tool. So 100% agree with you on that one. So Steve, you probably were right there. So there's 15% at capacity, can't take on more business. Pretty busy, but will always take on constant, but can take on. Okay, so that's uh, quite different to what we're experiencing in our office. Um, nearly everyone that we're talking to um, are flat out and just really busy and can't take on more business. So there might be a few reasons for that. And um, let's discuss those as we go through then. Um, and if you're not busy, well, yeah, there's so certainly a lot of things that you can do to help that. So I think you've all heard of the sales roller coaster before, the highs and lows of um, leads, income. And I think that's the nature of a business being in a cyclical environment, but also the way that we all generate income, which is commissions and, and trail income. So some months we'll have a great month, um, followed by, you know, perhaps a low month. And what we always notice is um, the build up to the great month is because you've done all this activity to get to being busy. And then typically what we find is when we're busy, we're not doing the other act activities that we used to do to get us busy. And then we, it's followed by, by um, a bit of a a ditch. So what we're trying to do is have a look at the difference in this cycle that we're currently in. And I'd like you to have a look at what the future might be looking at as well. So in this current cycle, we've had significant um, first home buyer incentives, best than we've ever seen um, in the two decades I've been involved anyway. So we've also been in a low interest rate environment and strong property markets. I'm not telling you anything you don't know there. What we do know over time, as everything does change, is interest rates will rise and we've started to see some of the longer fixed terms increase now. Um, property market will soften at some point in time and we will start to see borrowers struggling again when interest rates rise with their borrowing capacity and their serviceability. So I think uh, particularly first home buyers, I do worry about some of them because borrowing money is pretty much free at the moment, isn't it? Um, for those that have been borrowing for over 30 years, um, it's just nothing like it, is it? Well, I, you know, I call it free money. Um, so why wouldn't you be borrowing right now? But as we all know that if it gets back up to whatever interest rates that it could be, um, we will be looking at some serious things. So we don't know when the cycle is going to change. Um, could be end of this year, could be next year, might be in two years time. But regardless, regardless of the timing, I guess I'm sure we could all agree that it will happen at some point in time. 
So what happens when brokers are busy? Okay, so or, or when are brokers busy? And there seems to be patterns and there always have been and brokers are busy when interest rate moves. Okay, so whether the interest rates are going up, whether they're going down or even speculation of change. So if interest rates are going up, we all rush out, the consumers, we rush out and try and fix before it goes up. If your interest rates are going down, we rush out and try and um, get onto a better deal. So that's what's pretty much keeping busy now because you know we've come out from a pretty flat cycle, but with the with the property market going crazy like it is at the moment, um, that you know there's a lot of busyness around there. And what happens when interest rates are moving? We tend to refinance our existing clients into better deals. We start getting referrals and we start generating new business. When um, typically, so oh, I forgot to have a look at the fixed interest. So I wanted to have a look at that question. Let me just have a look at that now. So with the fixed interest question, we had, okay, so this is interesting. I really need to share this because this is probably one of my major points moving forward. So if you have a look at the fixed interest here, you've got more than 50% are fixed at the moment, 30 to 50. So there's only a few of you doing um, that aren't really fixing. So this is the group of people that I, I think that we need to have a, a conversation of what's going to happen when, when we stop being busy as well. If you don't know and don't track, I could highly recommend you to start tracking um, because you need to know what portions of your business you're doing what with so that you can make decisions moving forward in terms of how you're going to continue business moving forward. I guess we're all here for the long term, um, but that's really interesting. So we've got a lot of people between the 30 to 50 and over the 50%. So if the market is typically only 15%, which it has been for a very long time, it's not really a huge part of your database when things change. So if, um, if the market's moving up or down or even sideways, you've still got 85% of your client base that you can do things with while your fixed interest clients are rolling out. But what we need to start thinking about is over the next few years is when, um, when a large percent of your client base, and this 50% is exactly what I was nervous about having a look at, it's good, obviously, if you're going to lock in a trail and, you know, we've got your clients into a really, really good loan, which is the objective of, of businesses helping your clients first, absolutely. But in if a large percentage of your client base is fixed, well, then when the market softens, you're going to have less borrowers across the same amount of brokers. So let's say 50% of the market is fixed right now when we're looking for new business down the track, well, there's going to be a lot of people, half the market is tied up or 30 to, you know, 50% of the market is tied up in fixed loans. So what does that mean? It means, well, less upfront commissions for you, um, lower trail income because you're on that lower interest rate, um, and maybe we'll start to see a percentage of brokers leaving the industry or not. Um, you've all stuck it out through the Royal Commission, which is great. We saw a lot leave the industry after the um, global financial crisis. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, we keep the industry, but I guess we need to be uh, cognizant of the fact that, that we'll have half, only half of the market available to do more business with and capture business with. So that's really what I wanted to talk about, because this is serious, um, guys. So you need actually three times the number of contacts in your database um, over the next four to five years than you have now if you want to generate the same sort of business. Does that make sense? Um, I hope that makes sense anyway. So I guess um, we're all about the, uh, lead generation. So as, as we talk to our brokers, they go, no, I'm too busy for lead generation. I don't need any leads. That's fine. But if you're not continuing your client engagement and your nurturing program and putting on some sort of system, um, um, every every single person you talk to needs to go on the system. We still talk to brokers every day that only put their set of clients on their email marketing or only set of clients on um, their newsletters or whatever they do. But um, I've been talking for 17 years about every, you know, everyone that you know really needs to be on your database. So now's the time to build that database, regardless if they need to use your services or not. If you get them on your database now, well, as the cycle changes, as your business changes, at least you'll be communicating them uh, with them and they won't be somewhere else. So I guess 
um, when we undertake lead generation activities. And I'm not talking about when the phone rings and people walk in your door. I'm talking about when you actually go out to do lead generation activities like putting stuff on Facebook or um, sending emails out or um, working with your referral partners, your real estate agents account, those sort of things. Typically, when you do lead generation activities, you might, for every 100 leads, you might get between five and 20 that are looking at doing business with you now in the next three, you know, one to three months, maybe three to six months. A lot of it is for the future. So, um, and in many instances, they can take six months to convert or even longer because they've just met you, they don't know you, and you've got that um, time where you have to build trust and all those sort of things as well before they start using you. Sometimes you get lucky and you've got, you know, people that want to use your services now, particularly from um, referrals through friends and family. But it's also our experience that um, over the past 17 years of doing marketing for a lot of brokers is that clients are more likely to respond to your lead generation activities when the markets are hot and where there's a strong interest in refinancing. So we've got a lot of evidence to prove that you're going to have greater success building your database now which means you'll have a higher return on investment when the market's hot rather than waiting until you've got more time to look at your marketing and when you need new clients. So let's say the market starts to soften next year sometime. If you wait till things have slowed down to have a look at your marketing, it usually takes a three to six month process to build up that activity, to build up you know, where you're back to. So that's where we have that sales roller coaster going all the time. So, I thought I'd just share with you today our um, sales methodology. Um, so obviously, I'm, I'm hoping most of you, everyone should have email marketing now regardless. There's, there's, there's no excuse for not staying in touch with your clients. So let's hope that everyone's doing some sort of marketing with your clients. And there's a range of marketing activities you can do as well. Um, those, and this is another thing, a lot of people will put their clients that they meet on their database, but those that they don't do business with or don't have a points don't sell, they don't do anything with them. Again, they need to be on your nurturing program so that in three, four, five years time, they're ready to do business with you. Um, a lot of you that have been following ICM for the last seven years or 10 years with IFBF, you're on our database and you might not have done business with you, but we continue to market with you regardless. I've got two rules of marketing. As you keep marketing till you either opt out or you buy. So um, that's that as a rule that, you know, if you have that mentality, you'll always have leads to tap into in the later, um, um, later on. And the other thing is the nurture program. And this is a big gap that I see in a lot of marketing. So for example, um, listen, you were sharing how you can easily do a, um, a Facebook post, which is great. What I'd like to see to enhance that Facebook page post and make it more valuable and useful is perhaps promote a fact sheet or a property checklist or a loan checklist or some sort of checklist that people can then engage with you and qualify themselves into needing your services. So um, just having a product, and, and this is if there's one slide to take away from today's session is doing your marketing and your client communication, you need a strategy behind it. So it's not just about having a, a strategy, because, uh, sorry, a product, it's just having a product um, without a strategy, simply a product. So a Facebook post is just a Facebook post, a email campaign is just an email campaign, your website is just a website. Without that strategy behind it, it's unlikely to generate business for you. So if we attach a strategy to your products, so let's take um, Nissan's example of Facebook, for example. Instead of just a, hey, interest rates are going up, lock in soon, maybe there could be a white paper or an article, or if you're going out property shopping this weekend, take our property checklist and link that through to somewhere that you can have a landing page on the website, perhaps, um, where they can download and contact you for that property checklist. So you need a strategy behind every product, and that's, where I see a lot of things missing in this world of marketing and especially digital marketing. Um, and then you need to be able to measure the success of that. So every post you do or every email you send out, you should be able to have reports on your email marketing, what's opened, what's, um, you know, who opens them, who clicks through, who clicks through the things, who leaves responses, who downloads what. And then if you have a look in at the results there, well then you're only, if you, 
got more capacity for more leads, then you only need to follow up those people that have actually clicked or registered an interest on the marketing you're doing as opposed to the other three, four, five hundred people on, on, your, um, on your list. So I hope, hope all that makes sense. Um, so if you're going to communicate with your clients, you need a call to action. And a call to action isn't call the office for a chat. That's just basic marketing. A call to action is download this, um, click through to here, enter this. Um, it's actually an action that people will then self-qualify to needing to be called from you. And qualification can be surveys and questions. Everyone knows we run a competition. We use the competition. It's not about who wins a prize. It's actually about the data we capture behind the scenes of that competition. And people will answer, you know, has it been more than 18 months or two years since you've refinanced? So we ask relevant questions in that survey to find out who our partners need to call if they're looking for extra business. Because um, there's nothing worse than just calling your clients without um, any qualified, you know, broker calls me, Dina, do you need a loan? I don't know. Um, no, not really. But if you're thinking about buying property soon or it's been two years or three years since we've chatted to you, when I click that box, well, then you know who you're qualified to have those good communication and conversations with. So why market now? I think if we're looking at what's happening in the market at the moment, the March quarter annualised CP, um, CPI was 2.4 and it's forecast that we're going to see 3% this calendar year. And so, you know, the market seems to be running hot and RBA is saying it'll only consider increases in the interest rates when they, when the cash rate, when they see inflation and wage, wage growth above 3%. Um, so that's likely to occur if you're reading, you know, if you're following the markets there. Um, the US Federal Reserve saw a spike in CPI in the US at 5%. Now that was driven by car prices, domestic travel and accommodation. And if you bought a car, I've just bought a car recently. So there's two things I've noticed about that. Um, you can't get a new car unless you want to wait for six to eight months or 12 months. Um, the second car, car hand market, uh, car market has gone up incredibly because we can't get new cars. Uh, I've just sold my second hand car for $3,000 more than I would have 12 months ago because second hand cars have, um, increasing well. We're all doing a lot more domestic travel, which includes accommodation. So we all know this. Um, wages, I laugh every time I hear on the news and the government saying wages, there'll be no wage growth for, you know, whatever years, which is a bit of a joke. So if you have actually been trying to recruit people, uh, my experience and uh, experience of family members and other business, even in regional New South Wales is there's a lot of jobs out there, but there's not a lot of applicants. And when you do find an applicant, they're actually wanting a considerable, you know, sizable wage than you're used to paying. Uh, we've just been looking at putting on two new roles in our business and the income expectations are, I'm talking a lot of money than we used to have to pay. So that surprises me as well. So with that wage growth, obviously, obviously is coming um, with that interest and we'll buy more property now and those sort of things. Um, I think the key to all this, though, is we've seen the four and five year fixed rate interest rates rise recently. So it's always sort of a, you, you'll never out, out, um, out guess the banks. If the banks are putting their rates up, well, you know that they know something more than we do. And they're thinking that, yeah, no, it's not going to be this low forever. And we've seen that started already. Um, so these are some of the reasons we need to think about changes aren't coming. We need to make sure we're looking after our client base and growing it. Um, and look, it's, they're forecasting property growth at 20% this year, 6% um, next year. So it's still actually quite significant property growth, even if it drops down to 6%, that's still quite high. But it is an indication that, and you've got your property expert here with um, um, Meriden, and, um, you know, but it's likely to so, but being driven by affordability rather than demand. So I think having a look at all those factors, um, how do you position yourself in the best possible outcome is build the biggest, largest possible client base now as you can. And it doesn't mean that they're ready for today. It doesn't mean that you're doing business with them today, but everyone you meet, um, get really good at asking for referrals and appointments again. When we're too busy, we drop the things that we used to do when we weren't busy. So just put systems and processes in place to make sure that you're always adding to that database because you are going to need three times the clients in two years be able to generate the same amount of business. Um, employee successful lead generation strategy. Now you shouldn't have to buy leads now. 
um, because it's a hot market. People tend to go to buying leads when the market's flat and you're less busy, and it's really, really hard to get a conversion on that. But right now, there's enough things that you can do with your own business, your own client base to generate enough activity. Um, leverage technology. If your aggregator has technology, use it. Um, take the time out to learn. It's always that we put things in the too hard basket, but we've got to learn a technology like this. And he probably spent an hour fluffing around with Canva and then now it just comes easy to him and can whip something up in no time. So you do have to take time out to learn new technology. You need to take time out to make sure you're putting everyone you know on your database. And if you are that busy, you, 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 while you have the income and um, the revenue, maybe it is time to outsource and get help from people that can actually help you build, build your business up that you need to do. Start having conversations with your accountants, your real estate agents, and while everyone's busy, start doing that. And, um, and now's the time to actually start implementing that. Um, the biggest thing is about capturing new prospects. Again, what are you doing? Um, again, you need to ask referrals, talk to referral partners, but improve your digital footprint and think about, have a look at your email. What are you sending out in your emails? Is it just an educational piece or is there something worthwhile that people can click through and download something? And then you can go, oh, Dina downloaded that, that property checklist. She must be looking to buy a property or um, those sort of things. We need to start looking at the effectiveness of your emails. Um, I've been working with two financial planning groups um, the last few months and um, they've, they've, they've got a massive database and they've been marketing to financial planners and that, but getting very, you know, emailing. And I said, well, what's your, you know, what's your call to action? Uh, they're just sending information out to educate people and saying, give us a call if you want more info. And so, well, you need them to, you know, to download something. You need to get them into a webinar. You need to book them into your diary. You need need this call to action. So the minute we started doing that, um, it took probably a two to three week process of implementing some capture processes that we're now starting to fill their diaries. So um, you need marketing that will support that capture process and that qualification process to um, work with the people that want to be worked with, so to speak. Um, and thought now, while well, you have got a bit of time, um, so I just thought I'd share with you the YCM sales process. We've all seen sales funnels. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. But effectively, what we're looking at is we need to fill the sales funnel, the sales funnel bucket. So there's a lot of different ways we can acquire prospects. The next stage of acquiring them is we've got to put them into a database or a CRM of some sort. If you're not using your aggregator CRM, get one. And it's not, a, it's not an Excel spreadsheet anymore. Um, a lot of the um, email platforms work nearly as good as a CRM well. So MailChimp and Active Campaign, Constant Contact, all of those email platforms can be a CRM for you as well. Then the engagement piece is communicate, whether, it, like I said, Facebook, LinkedIn, email, website, engage them, have triggers to engage them, which will then qualify them into a conversation with you. Then it doesn't end here. And the reason why... Uh, I'm so passionate about what we do and I've been doing this for so long as most of you know my story. I've used it about nine brokers in my life for buying lots of property and um, post settlement is typically very poor across a lot of businesses. We tend to not hear from our service provider um, after the business is done. So this is where you need to maintain your existing content, contact with your client base, re-engage them. So you need to have a diverse range of content. So a first homeowner, if you've got if you're dissecting your database and you put them in a first home owner category and you market to first home owners and you've got a sequence for there, well, as soon as they buy a first home, they're not first home owner anymore, so you need to move them into the next sequence. So that can be really tricky if you don't have some convoluted, really, uh, you know, technical process. So I, we have a rule at Wise, and you just market to everyone because everyone knows a first home buyer. I've actually helped three first home buyers buy a property in the last 12 months. Um, I've helped people refinance, I've helped people get business loans and all sorts of things. So everyone knows someone in a 12 month period and um, and, and that, that's our process. While you're there, I have got a QR code there. Um, if you'd like to have a copy of the sale process, there's a full document outlining that. I do have a link for that as well, actually. If you want to click on the link, I'll just pop that in there in the chat room while I'm talking. So I can find 
find out where the chat room is as well. Go back to the chat room. Um, I've just been raving on at the moment. Do we have any questions while I'm just doing this? Yeah, if you do have questions, pop them in the chat or take yourself off mute if you like and um, let Dina know if you do have any questions. That was that was really good, Dina. I, I think um, the, your point about the CRM is very good that we're no longer, you know, in a world where we can afford to not have a CRM and there's a lot of free ones out there you can utilize. And certainly I think every aggregator out there uh, that's that's of any size or consequence probably has, you know, that um, available yeah. to, to everyone. Oh, yeah. And I know most aggregators too are offering some sort of, you know, minimal marketing thing that can help, you know, you keep in touch with your client. And look, minimal marketing is better than anything, but I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll show you one more screen, um, just a couple of more. So this is, this is just to outline what we do at Wise Info Marketing Parts. We have lots and lots of different lead generation strategies. You need more than one lead strategy. Um, and I think people have over the years just think of YFM as that print based you know, um, magazine, which we're a lot more than that. That's how we started. But there's so many lead strategies out there and you need tools and um, content and things to help you with that. Lead magnet, you've heard the word lead magnet. That's just a way to capture details and put them on your database and then you nurture them. Um, you qualify them by what they download and what they click through on and what they enter. And then you engage them through your ongoing, ongoing marketing. So that's, that looks very complicated, it's not, but it just shows the more activities that you've got to feed into your um, database and your nurturing program, the better it is you're going to have at the end of the day. And we've, we've been here, it wasn't actually that long ago when we were all sitting here, I think it was 18 months ago, we're sitting here pulling our hair out going, well, I need more leads. And we were just flat out helping brokers get more leads. Now we're, we're too busy. We don't have time to get leads, but if you, if you want to fill that gap of that roller coaster, we've got to sort of get that plateau where the activity is happening regardless of how busy you are. And that's when you need a system in place to keep that going on a, on a regular basis. And look, if you can't do it yourself, if you are too busy, invest in good quality services or good quality products and systems that can actually help you do that. So ah, there we go. I found my chat box now. So I'll just pop that if you do want to... Um, grab that um, sales, sales process document, just click on that. You'll be able to download and put your details there and we'll email it out to you. Um, but I'm open for questions on, on if anyone does want to have a couple of questions on, you know, what does work, what doesn't work, why you're not busy. Um, more than happy to open up to the floor now. If, if anybody has any question, yeah, please uh, take yourself off mute, drop it in the chat. Uh, one thing, just while we're waiting for anyone to pipe up, and we will have a short break here uh, just after this, because uh, I've had too much coffee and water sitting here, and I definitely need a, a toilet break. But uh, both the FBAA and MFAA have some fantastic free resources, if you're a member, obviously, that you can download. I love that idea, Dina, of um, uh, creating a Facebook ad, putting a checklist out there for home buying, whatever it might be. Uh, and then trying to, you know, draw them in to download that free resource, obviously give the information to do that. That is such a simple thing. And with the resource that uh, Nissen showed us today with Canva, you could brand that up nicely and have that up and running by 5 p.m. today. And that's just, you know, something simple uh, even to do as a, as a broker to potentially generate some business. So um, love that, Dina. Any, any questions from anybody? Link. I think I put the wrong link in there. So I'll just put the right link in now. There you go, I had a link to the survey results. So it's like again, just get as many people on your marketing list. Um, you need, you will, will need, you know, top two to three times more people on your list to be able to find your business in maybe 12 months time, 18 months, but just do the activity if you can, get someone. Uh, Laurie's got a new girl coming in working. I don't know what your, her role is, Laurie, but if she can be building that database and getting more people and making sure everyone's on there with correct email addresses, um, mobile numbers, SMS marketing is brilliant. If you can learn to do a little bit of SMS marketing uh, and that's beyond just birthday messages, but um, you know, marketing, uh, SMS marketing is very, very effective. And webinars, get your videos happening and, um, and, and try webinars with your audience if, if um, you haven't been doing that yet. But awesome. thank you, Bang. Um, really appreciating being um, involved today and uh, I'm too looking forward to a coffee right now. 
good, good. Thank you very much, Dina. Put your hands together, everybody, for Dina. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, as we exit for a quick five-minute break, um, I would like to ask everyone here that, that's with us today, just put this in the chat, yes or no. Uh, would you uh, be interested in a master class on marketing? If the IFBF put that together, had some guests like Dina come in and present and maybe deep dive into this over the course of maybe a four-hour session or something like that, uh, either on Zoom or in person, I'm not sure on that yet, but if you, if you could put that into the chat, please. Uh, yes or no, if you're interested in something like that, and we can put that together. Five minute break, guys. We'll be back at 12 o'clock. Grab a coffee, go to the toilet. That's where I'm headed. See you soon. One moment. So just before I, um, uh, I broke the meeting out, I asked the question uh, to everyone, if we put on a marketing masterclass, if that would be something of interest to you. Um, we've had some good positive responses in the chat. So yeah, please, if you haven't responded to that, even if it's no, I'm, I'm happy to hear that as well. Um, I would have to assume that a non-response is a no, but I would prefer that you just say no, uh, as opposed to uh, not give us a response. So yeah, please let me know if that's something you would be interested in. All right, so uh, we're getting into the home stretch, gang. Thanks for sticking around and uh, almost lunchtime. I think my stomach is grumbling, so we shall get through the, the last half hour. And uh, Steve, are you there? Where's Dinty? I might not have to worry about this breakout group. <laughs> yeah, I was so, thinking uh, that as well. Yeah, uh, so what we can do, I think, is we'll have Steve uh, present, uh, or Steven. Do you go by Steve or Steven? Does it matter? Do you answer to either one, Mr. Watson? Uh, yes, yeah, Steve's fine. Steve's fine, perfect, thank you. Uh, so we, um, we, we might uh, do your session. We'll have a couple of sponsors, Spotlight. I think we got Ozlone and uh, Prospa. Is Prospa, did they show up? Uh, they're not here today. Okay, we'll give double time to uh, Oslo's then. Lucky you guys. Uh, actually, I might squeeze eFunder in there um, as a uh, alternative lender. But anyway, let's get Mr. Stephen Watson from Rate My Broker. The floor is yours, sir. Tell us all about what you do and um, yeah, how we can improve our digital presence. Yeah, fantastic. Um, thank you, uh, Stephen, for inviting me in today to come speak to the group. Um, just by a few other names on Zoom here, I think there's a few people that are already using us at the moment. Um, so just to introduce myself, um, I'm the head of sales for Rate My Agent. Um, some people do call us um, Rate My Broker, um, but we, we kind of are Rate My Agent. Um, that's something I'll address because um, that, that does come up quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm here to, to talk to you about the power of reviews today and, and how you can really, really utilize them to, to grow your digital presence. Just going to share my screen. Uh, I think a good place to always start in before I go into our product um, is just to actually talk about reviews themselves and, and why they're important. Um, just, I guess just to address our admission statement first, um, the reason why we exist um, is for consumers uh, and expanding to mortgage broking now, um, helping them find the best trusted real estate agents and now mortgage brokers as well, which has been really exciting for us over the last 12 months. So I've just got some stats um, just about how consumers engage with reviews these days. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but, you know, reviews is a big part of what we do right now um, within broking, within real estate. Uh, if we're looking to go to a restaurant, we're, of course, reading reviews before we book in, right? Um, for Rate My Agent, um, we've been around for the last six or seven years. Um, got a very mature presence within Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we've also got over 120,000 agents on the platform in the USA now as well, um, really expanding the platform out on, on global scale. And uh, I think a big one on there is um, we're collecting a review at the moment for one in every three properties sold in Australia. Um, and that number is actually very much closing in on two and three uh, with some of the growth we've had within the last uh, 12 months. Um, another key one there is, um, you know, consumers are reading an average of 10 line on re reviews before trusting a business. Um, and look, they're not just on rate my agent. Um, those are Google reviews, um, Facebook recommendations, um, visiting our own website. Um, so it's, it's really important that you've got the coverage across the multiple different platforms. Uh, a key point I just want to pull out just on this slide, um, just before I go into a bit of a live demo, um, that might be one of the benefits, um, being able to easily screen share and then do a live demo, where I would have just had to do slides um, if we're in face to face today. Uh, but we're very um, passionate on being a subscription business in the way that we operate. And this has been a big thing for real estate agents um, that we don't charge for leads and we're not after a clip of the commission. 
um, we've really built the platform kind of on global state, uh, scale to be able to uh, make it a subscription base. Um, so that's something that's very important on continuing that in um, all the different verticals uh, that we go into. So I'm just going to um, jump out of this presentation here. And um, actually just take you through a live platform um, demo really quickly. Um, so, so this is our homepage. Um, you can see on there, um, we've obviously got the real estate side and then we've got the mortgage broking um, tab within here. Uh, the, the general, uh, what people default to when they come to our website from a consumer perspective um, is of course searching by location uh, and, and, and that being ge geographical for, for, for consumers. Um, so, so the way in which the, the kind of website operates is, um, if you've got someone within Quakers Hill in New South Wales, um, they're probably uh, going to want to find brokers pretty close to that. So really optimising that, that search down to location. Um, and essentially um, what that pops up is, um, you know, the, the brokers that are collecting reviews within those areas um, and really showcasing their presence. Um, I saw Joshua uh, on the call here. Um, he, he's an active user of the platform and um, well done, Josh. Um, I think you won one of our awards um, last year. Uh, and um, at the moment, you've got 137 recommendations uh, within New South Wales. Um, so that's, that's a large number for 12 months. <laughs> uh, it must mean you're providing a great service to your clients. And just imagine if you were doing online research to, to be able to see that um, it's not just one or two reviews, um, but they're obviously being, you know, consistent. Um, and, you know, that really does give a lot of social proof to, to why you should engage it, just to have a chat about your, um, your mortgage broken requirements. Um, in, inside that, um, when we go into, I guess, um, you know, the, uh, the profiles, and I've, I've just got one here at the moment, um, you can see this is someone that's providing some really good service again. Um, they've got, you know, um, 61 five-star reviews. Um, they're really frequent in their reviews. So when consumers are looking at this, um, not only do they want to see the volume of reviews, but they also want to see the frequency of it as well. So when you see that in live time, there's reviews, you know, three real, really within the last week, um, that, that shows some really positive momentum there. Um, in saying that, um, you need your reviews in more than one place. Um, and this is the reason why I've had the real growth of the platform for real estate agents. And um, we've actually, in terms of brokers, we're just over a thousand brokers on the platform within the last 12 months, um, which is a number where, you know, we're really, really proud of. Um, and, and we feel like we're solving a real problem because once we get these rate my agent reviews, um, we can then essentially multiply them um, across all the different platforms um, that you need them. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you all what that looks like. Um, so Josh, I just um, Googled your name in there earlier. Um, and you can see um, for Josh, the, the first two uh, links that come up um, are rate my agent. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's pretty powerful when you type it in someone's name. And the first thing that you see is they've got 135 reviews and, and, and a five-star rate rating on those. Um, and then essentially, once you click into that, of course, it's, it's ending up on that, that really professional profile. And so just taking a step um, back in here, um, when we're essentially, um, you know, a lot of people, we know Google's one of the biggest search engines out there, right? When you're obviously you're, you're starting your, your process. Um, so what Google really loves is content. Um, so they're recognizing uh, there's 135 reviews there. And once we do that, the real secret to it is um, each review, as you can see in there, it has its own kind of unique website. So every review, that's essentially another piece of brand new content, which we're putting in Google out there each time. Um, so when they're crawling, and they're seeing 135, that's the reason why they're ranking it out there at the top because there's so many pieces of content um, are being produced. Um, so Google, I was about to go through, so for us is a really um, important platform and we actually integrate with Google in six different ways. Um, so these landing pages are one aspect of it. The second uh, is the actual organic search results, which you're actually seeing there um, within Google. Um, and then of course, um, we wanna get those uh, reviews into what we call the Google My Business Profile, which I'm just about to show you now. 
Um, so I've just got Entourage Finance. Um, they're actually um, the first, well, they're quite a big mortgage broker down in Melbourne. They're actually the first clients to come on board on the platform. Um, what I will say to that is um, the director there um, is a shareholder in Rate My Agent, hence why he probably jumped on straight away um, and um, was, was actually involved with a lot of our early founders. Um, we actually wanted to get into mortgage broken a lot quicker, um, but we just had a, a lot of um, transact, uh, a lot more traction on the real estate side. Um, and a lot of that was more from a data perspective. I mean, being able to really integrate into a lot of the CRMs um, in the early stages. Um, so when we come in here into the Google My Business profile, um, you can see here we've got 213 um, reviews. And we're playing a part in actually helping build up that star rating into Google. Um, so if I go into newest here, you can see this review that it's a 10 out of 10 experience. And then if I go into uh, Vincent's profile here, who I showed earlier, you can see that is the exact same review actually on Rate My Agent. So what we're actually doing is we're syndicating that review through to Google. Now, with that syndication, um, this is probably the one that we can't completely automate. Um, so they have to either have a Google account. We do the same thing with Facebook. Uh, and you essentially, you need to be um, logged into that platform. Um, now, a lot of people are using Gmail. Um, and there's lots of different versions of, of Google accounts that you can have, um, but it does require them to, to be logged in and to leave that review. So you're never going to get 100% of the reviews across to Google, um, but the people that kind of optimize their templates and they, you know, they say to their customers, look, it's really important for us to get the rate my agent review, but Google's also really important to us as well. They always get a much higher conversion rate on, on getting those reviews across. So that's just an example of what that looks like. In saying that, um, there is one way in which we can automate 100% of the reviews across to Google, um, which is something called Google Posts. Um, not a lot of people know about this feature within Google. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually really big over in the States um, with mortgage brokers and agents having their own Google My Business page. But essentially, because it's a post, you can get 100% of those into your profile. And if we click on this review here, and go into the website, which will link back, and um, it'll, it'll, it'll essentially, um, it'll, it'll take, take, take you straight back over, over, over to that review. I think I'm just having a, a loading issue there. Um, but essentially that's really, really powerful to be able to get 100% of your reviews um, across to Google. So, so that, that, that's a couple of other ways that we integrate um, Google there. Um, really simply without going through all the different platforms, um, this is just an example of what a post would look like out in Facebook or LinkedIn, very similar to that Google post there. And all this stuff is able to be 100% automated. So as soon as that review is received, um, you can set up a schedule to go out or review once a week, to go out daily as they come in, and that will just get you essentially across all the different platforms. So just an overview of that social media, what we're doing now. Um, you can go into Instagram. Uh, into Facebook. Um, Twitter is something that's a lot bigger over in the States and Australia where we're, we're not that heavy here on Twitter. Um, and then essentially LinkedIn, um, which is really popular for brokers is that, that business um, networking. Um, and of course, you've got the Google My Business profile, um, which, which we went in there. And so the responsibility, um, because a lot of this is automated, um, is essentially just um, requesting out those reviews. Um, so the process is really, really simple. Um, so all you need to do is essentially select whether it's a new purchase or a refinance and put the client's details uh, within there. Um, and, you know, um, if you want to personalise out a message here, you can absolutely do that. Um, a lot of people um, do put in there, um, as I mentioned, about getting, um, if you can take that extra um, 10 seconds for us and copy and paste that over to Google, uh, it's a really simple process in there for the consumer. And the, the thing once you've done all this is, um, you're essentially being able to get your reviews on up to eight different platforms. Um, and one of those includes your own website as well, uh, which can be done uh, through a widget. Um, the other functionality, which is really important when people start with a platform, is something called post an existing review. So if you've received testimonials off your own website, um, you've had someone send you a Christmas card, um, any form of kind of communication where you've got a referral, you can actually bring all those reviews into one banner into your profile. 
Um, now there is an option in there um, where essentially you put the client's details in there. Um, and it's just something that we call verifying that review. And if you can imagine, um, there's just an email that goes out, which just says, yes, I did in fact give this broker that review. Um, it turns into a fully verified review because essentially, you know, the customer has basically acknowledged that. Um, but this is a really powerful feature for brokers when they first came onto the platform because you don't want to lose your existing review profile. You've got those ones on Google out there already. You might have a couple on Facebook, a couple over email, and you can actually centralize them um, in one place. And you know the benefit by doing that is if you've got 20, 30, 40, 50 reviews, you're immediately going to be able to create 50 microsites within Google, which is really going to enhance your presence and, and bring that to the top of the page um, when, when people are searching for you. Um, so that's what the syndication, I guess, aspect looks like. Um, and that would be the key problem that I'm saying that we're solving here. You, you want your reviews on more than one platform. And what Great My Agent has been able to do is essentially um, solve that problem for agents and brokers um, to have that presence um, across the multiple platforms. Um, so there's this one point that I just recalled earlier um, that in presentation I didn't address, um, which is a rate my agent and a rate my broker. Um, so there was some discussion for us when we launched, um, do we go ahead and actually create a separate website um, and lose all of our traffic that we have? Um, because that, that's a really big part for us in the way that we rank within Google at the moment. Um, so, so we're averaging about a million visits to the site um, every single month. And essentially, we wanted brokers to be able to tap into that real estate audience that the agents had already built up within the platform. Um, so that, that was the reason um, for basically keeping it under one banner. Uh, we will be doing a lot more work in the next 12 months to the website in terms of how we leverage that data and, and, and how we you know, get that traffic coming through to, to people's profiles. Um, you probably haven't heard me talk a lot about leads and that side, that side of the space. People, have, uh, real estate agents and brokers have absolutely been getting leads through us, um, but that wouldn't be the, the key thing on what was the problem that we believe that we, we solve. Um, if you do get the review presence right, that will naturally lead to building that social proof and having that lead generation. Um, but it's also very for hard, hard for us to capture because you go across the eight different platforms, they could see that on Facebook and come directly through to Messenger where they could directly call you. And a lot of that, unfortunately, is, is untrackable. Um, but the feedback we have been getting is um, the people that are getting the heavy review volume, uh, it, it's, it's really working for them um, to provide that, that social proof to the consumers. So um, I just, uh, just before you go on to your pricing, um, I know we, I think we have Josh in the group. Do you want to? Yeah, I'd actually love to hear uh, from um, Josh. Yeah, that, this might be the right time to uh, have him just say something. Josh, wherever you are, just maybe take yourself off mute. Hey, Stephen, how are you going? Hey, Josh. Thanks, guys. Yeah, um, look, basically, I guess um, from a broker's point of view, I think I started using Rate My Agent roughly probably a year ago. Um, I deal quite heavily with real estate agents. They're my biggest referral partner. So I knew about the platform already. So I, I already knew how big it was from a, an agent's perspective. Um, so thought if it can get that big from a broker's uh, side of view, it could be quite um, useful in terms of um, gaining that kind of credibility. Um, but look, yeah, it been really pumping pretty much every client and pushing them to make sure they put their reviews down and implemented it into our process, like, you know, wholeheartedly. So every single client, um, when their loans are, are formally approved, will we'll get a call and basically discuss, you know, how the process was, what their feedback was. And I kind of position it and say, look, you know, if you, um, if you are happy with the, you know, the result that you got, would you mind uh, writing a review? And if they said yes, basically ask them if there's anything else I could do to get a five-star review or have I already done enough? And I'd probably say almost every single person will say, no, I'm more than happy to give you a five-star review. So you're kind of positioning that to them that that's the expectation that it is going to be a five-star review. I guess it's a slight uh, push in that direction. Um, and I'm finding that's been working pretty uh, successfully. But um, I think, like you said before, um, Stephen, it's not so much about getting leads out of this. I think that um, it's more so about the credibility, um, which in turn will lead to that extra, um, you know, you know, I guess those leads that will come in. So um, 
if a client is kind of new and um, you know been sent through to us, sometimes I will send a link through to the profile and just say, look, if you just want to see a little bit of information about my recent track record, um, here's a link. I'll send it to them in an SMS or, or an email. Um, click on it, have a scroll through, and you can see my recent results. Um, you know, and most of them come back and say, you know, wow, well, you know, because it's it's not, I guess, normal that people would be doing that. Um, and the other thing as well is that it is integrated with LinkedIn, um, Google, um, you know, Google Posts, Facebook. So we've, um, with our account or with my account, have integrated all of those platforms. And some of you would probably see if you've got me on LinkedIn that there's a post every week. Um, there's a post daily on Google. Um, our Google reviews are going up much quicker now that we've integrated it. So I've gotten, I think, about four or five deals off someone just contacting me saying, hey, saw you're a broker, saw a bunch of reviews that have been posted on your, your page in the last three or four weeks. Um, do you want to give me a call and we can have a chat? I'm looking to do a refinance or whatever it is. And, and these are people sometimes that I know and haven't spoken to for five or six years. And some of them I don't know at all. So I haven't, um, I guess, uh, seen the, the full uh, results from all of that yet. I think the first loan I'm settling off the back of that will be next month. Um, but there's also another three that have been lodged. So the cost of the system has well and truly been paid for and obviously then some in terms of that credibility. Um, so from a broker's point of view, and, and I'm not getting paid for giving them a plug just so you guys know, um, but I, I, uh, I truly believe in what they offer and there's no other system that I'm aware of out there like it. Just to say that without Josh needing to position um, his next client, we've just supported one of his clients um, and they think he is absolutely extraordinary. So you, it'll be 137 five-star referrals. Um, he, <laughs> yeah. he, they, they love you, mate. They love you. Thank you, mate. <laughs> yeah, they haven't done their review yet. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to hit them up. It'll be a goodie, I can assure you. <laughs> well, oh, very um, good. Yeah, Josh, I think we should almost pay, should have paid you there. Um, <laughs> that was, <laughs> but, but it is great to hear um, uh, fr from you firsthand. Um, you know, the broken space. Yeah, it is about a year because we we launched in July, um, June, kind of last year. So coming up to that that one year anniversary now. Um, so just to talk about, um, you know, from a cost perspective, um, there's two packages. Um, there's one that kind of dip your toes in the water at the basic. Um, that allows you to collect an unlimited amount of reviews um, to establish that professional profile, um, to have um, those reviews with their own unique pages um, and the ability to link those reviews to your own website. And then essentially what the pro gives you is those Google integrations, um, those social media integrations, which is really, you know, taking the review across all the platforms. Um, that you should, you know, want to be getting the reviews on um, at the end of the day. And, um, you know, it, it's not too onerous. Um, you, all you really need to do is get it set up at the start and spend that 10 to 15 minutes to connect it into all the platforms. And um, once you receive your review, um, it, is, it essentially goes there for you. Um, so, yeah, happy to, um, to take any other questions or uh, if anyone else has been using within the group, love, love, love to hear any more feedback. Um, I'll drop my de details in the chat on how you can get in touch with myself and the team. Um, more than um, happy to, um, you know, spend 10, 15 mi minutes with anyone offline, um, answering any, any deeper questions. Um, what we are also offering at the moment, in addition to this pricing, um, end of financial year, I know it's quite corny, but the business does this every year, um, but there is a 30% discount um, happening right now um, to close off that end of fin year. Um, so essentially, um, off the annual pricing you see here, um, you'd be able to get another 20% uh, on top. Um, which would take that pro package roughly down to, I think about just over 800 bucks. Um, and then you'd be within the 400s um, with, with, with on the basic um, side of things. Um, so yeah, that, that uh, is going until um, uh, the end of this month. That's awesome. That's awesome. That sounds like a fantastic deal, actually. I'm sold. <laughs> All right, any questions for- uh... Yeah, there was just a question and I'll just ask that. How do you manage um, negative reviews? Oh, yeah. Um, so this one um, is a really, really good question. Um, so the first one is because the brokers obviously have the ability to go and request the reviews, um, you're kind of within full control, right? Because it's not automated. Um, in saying that, it, it, it does come up, um, but probably not that much because if you thought you had a really bad transaction, you're probably not going to request the review, right? 
Um, but, you know, getting that feedback, I think, is really important um, from the customers um, to, you know, hear where they're coming from. And um, if you're able to approach them the right way by, you know, getting that call out to the person within 24 hours, um, some, what we find a lot of times is that they're potentially solved. Um, and if they're giving you a one, two, three star review, um, if, you've been, if you are able to rectify what, what's happened or at least hear them out, have a proper conversation with them, you'll often find back they'll come and actually adjust the review for you. Um, if you talk to them, you know, genuinely about how important that is for you. Um, so yeah, first part of it is you're in control of the reviews that you send out, um, but it's the real management process and doing that very, very quickly once the review is received. Uh, if you don't do that and you let it go for a couple of days, um, that's when you'll find it very, very hard to, to turn around from there. Um, so that, that, that's how you manage the negative ones coming through. And we've got a full support team that's got templates and, you know, they're available anytime to help you navigate those issues with customers. Awesome. Very good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's been a jam-packed technology meeting today. We've got some great stuff there. Cool. I don't uh, see any other questions in the chat. Um, and uh, I'm sure Stephen will hang around uh, if anyone wants to, uh, yeah, ask some questions or whatnot. Um, just before we wrap the meeting up, though, we probably will go a little bit over time today. Uh, but is Zarko around? Where are you, Zarko? We've got a special guest next month. Uh, who is that, Zarko? It's uh, Mike Felton, the uh, CEO of the MFAA PJ. So, you know, not kind of a heavy hitter in the industry, you might say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Mike will be joining us at our next IFVF uh, meeting. Uh, for those of you who um, want to hear about what's going on in the industry, Mike's always uh, got lots to say about how the MFAA is supporting the industry and what's going on. I'm sure uh, there'll be some regulation updates and other things that he will share with us. So um, as soon as we get the invite out for that, be sure to register. Obviously, at this stage, we won't know whether we're meeting online or, or in person. We'll just have to see how everything unfolds, but uh, we'll let everyone know on that. Special Thank you, Zarko. For that meeting. You're welcome. Uh, so Special just, uh, Steve? Special date for the meeting. Which is? The 23rd of July. So the 23rd of July, there you go. So 23 23rd. July, uh, put it in your calendar now. I think we, yeah, I'm not, can't remember why we moved that, but anyway, 23rd of July. Um, we're going up to the GC. Oh, of course. That's right. So we're scheduling everything around us. You see how that works when you're the bosses? You get to move things around. It's great. All right. I'm just quickly going to ask Greg from Oz Loans Group to uh, jump on, give us a little um, reminder of what you guys do. Oz Loans Broker Group is, of course, one of our sponsors, uh, has been for a few years now. Fantastic group. They've brought on a new person, I think, uh, recently. I put that somewhere in the chat. So, Greg, are you in the house? Hi. Thank you, PJ. And we uh, would like to welcome Babic Thakkar, who a lot of you will know, uh, to the Osloans Broker team. And what I wanted to talk about today was that, um, that he moved from a broker group, direct to a broker group, sorry, um, an aggregator, to join Osloans Broker Group. So, so why, does, why would a broker do that? I don't want to can aggregators. Um, but we do believe that we provide the best of both worlds uh, and we also take away some of the negatives that people have when they are direct with an aggregator. Um, but some of the positive things are that, that when you get the best of both, both worlds with Osloan's Broker Group, more tools, more support because it's one-to-one. -one. Anytime you like to contact us, we're, we're here. Um, lower costs. If you're doing one deal a month, you're going to be cheaper with Osloan's Broker Group than direct with an ag any aggregator. Um, and lots more information, lots more extra tools. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, on the other side, we have seen contracts. Uh, uh, we, we see a lot of brokers and we see their contracts with so broker agreements with their, um, their current, uh, current people. And we believe and we know that Osloan's Broker Group agreement is written broker friendly which suggests, of course, the other ones are not, <laughs> which I might agree with. Um, so, uh, look, have a look at your broker agreement and you may find things like that you can't take your clients with you when you leave. We didn't read those in the early days when we started, did we? You can't take your trail with you when you leave. There might be certain, or in, or in fact, when I left Red Rock, um, I lost 40% of my trail the day, the day I left. Um, so our agreement is broker friendly, 
please feel free to send your agreements to us and I'll look through them because they're normally like 30 pages long. Um, and they often have a lot of clauses that are benefiting the current uh, group you're with. Ours are for you. Everything is written that benefits you. Obviously, we still have to exist. Um, please feel free to send me your broker agreements and I'll go through them. Um, and I'm quite happy to share ours as well with anybody interested. Uh, Ausloans Broker Group, a broker friendly broker group. Broker friendly broker group. That's what we like. We want broker friendly broker groups. Awesome. Well, I've managed to uh, pull us in right on 1230. So I think uh, we have had a full lid today. This is fantastic. Um, ease into the weekend, ladies and gents. It's been great to see you all online. Lots of content. Uh, I will endeavor to get this recording up on the IFBF website. Uh, membership, uh, you have to be a member to access that. Uh, Steve's got his hand up. Yes, sir. Just not to be the bearer of bad news, but I've just read that the state government has put four LGAs into lockdown. So uh, most of them in the inner city, Willara, Sydney, uh, and that neck of the woods. So I'm safe so far out here in the, the wild west. Um, so uh, run out, get your it. toilet paper. Yeah, buy as much pasta as you can paper. and uh, all, your, all the canned goods and uh, you know, <laughs> no, just kidding. We don't want to start any more panics. Well, it looks like we're going to have a quiet weekend around Sydney. So I hope that everyone enjoys it. And um, for anybody that wants to stick around, I'll leave the I'll leave this on for uh, for maybe five, ten more minutes. If anybody wants to stick around, and have a chat with either Oz Loans Group or uh, uh, Stephen or Josh. It might be kind of difficult if everyone's talking to one another. But uh, if you do have any questions, feel free. But that is a wrap for the meeting. So, ladies and gents, thank you so much for this month and uh, we'll see you on again steve the 23rd of july which is the week before our normal meeting and uh book that in mike felton's going to be the uh the draw card for the meeting we'll see you then cheers Bye. my details in the chat if anybody wants to chat later on lovely thanks Joe. thank you thank you michelle bye bye <laughs>